Hey there, and welcome back to the Pedalorium. I've been pretty busy doing lots of fixes and tweaks, so I thought it's time for a quick update to show you Pedalorium version 2.0. After I replaced the pedalo, which was the original base of the Pedalorium, I used these catamaran holes. And they've been great, but they were a bit too heavy, plus they could never really fit them very well on the trailer, so they're very bulky and awkward to handle. I was never truly happy with the catamaran holes in the Pedalorium. They made it sit too high out of the water, so it's time to replace them with something more sleek. So I bought these new Aqua Marina inflatable sups. They're about 3.8 meters long. I put a little bit of vine around the top temporarily just to protect the top as we're going to be walking on a lot. I've also bought some flexible PVC paint so we can paint this later on to give it a nicer finish rather than just a loose vinyl. So they're a lot lighter to move around, they're easier to put on, you can fit them in the van and take them apart nice and easily and they work pretty well and in the water it sits lower, it looks a bit more sleek and certainly better than the catamaran holes. Unfortunately a lot of weed builds up in the canal over the spring and summer and some points it's just impossible to launch from the slipway. This is just built up over a few weeks and we're always cleaning it out of the way but it just keeps growing back so I drag it all away with uh, this big fork and have to pile it up all in the corner and then it stinks but I cleared away here as you can see but this stuff is just disgusting it gets in the props and even the swans can't eat that much of it. So I decided to pack up the DeLorean, throw it all in the van and drive up to the Norfolk Broads where the water was a lot clearer. And it was a pretty tight fit as you can see, we only just got it in. And by the time you start adding all the other stuff in, like the life jackets, buoyancy aids, inflatable subs, which are the holes, it takes up pretty much the entire van. I finally got to the campsite in the lashing rain so I can meet up with my friend Chris. Anyone order a DeLorean? How are you doing mate? You Chris has brought his amazing 1970s speedboat that we've nicknamed the Jaffa for obvious reasons, as you can see here. He's usually whizzing around Scottish locks on it, up to speeds of about 40 miles an hour. I think he even got 45 out of it at one point. Naturally, he's not going to be whizzing around the broads at 45 miles an hour, because that would be highly illegal and irresponsible. But he wanted to test it out at some lower speeds to make sure the tweaks he's done to the engine and the carburetor would work at lower speeds. Thankfully, the next day in Norfolk, the rain's cleared and we could launch the Pedalorian on the slipway. A slipway without loads of weed and rubbish on it. Remarkably, within just a few minutes of having the Delorean launched, people were approaching us and asking us questions about it. We even spoke to a lady who met John DeLorean who designed the original car because he used to work with Lotus who were based in Norfolk and she worked with him over the years and she was telling us all about the meetings with him and some really interesting stories. Then a few minutes later a couple passed by with a couple of small really cute dogs and they said oh can we take photos of your DeLorean we really like it and yeah because our kids really love Back to the Future you won't believe what our dogs are called. And they showed us the name tags on the dogs and they were called Doc and Marty. And this was all within just a few minutes of arriving in Norfolk. So there's something about DeLoreans clearly that have got so many people connected to them in some random way and certainly back to the future. So yeah, you can't really hide when you're in a DeLorean. But it's time to start pedaling, not furiously, but 
just enough to get us out of the marina in the slipway area onto the main part of the Broads and this is the River Waveney I believe which leads onto the River Thurn and we're going to head towards the direction of Thurn Windmill which there's a really nice pub there and you can grab some ice creams and stuff so that was the plan it's really not that far maybe half a mile perhaps a mile but when you're pedaling it's a very very slow journey as we sit pretty low in the water you can't see over the top of the reeds on the side of the river and you do feel a bit more vulnerable when you have boats going past you. Once we're around onto the main section of the broads, you start getting quite a bit of wash from some of the boats. Um, they're going really slow, they're not going more than three or four miles an hour, but they certainly shouldn't be. But because they're big, they give quite a bit of wake, and certainly for us, who are just on a couple of inflatable paddle boards, Chris wondered what the people in these boats would be thinking, seeing us now stupid peddler. Oh, then when you get overtaken by this kind of boat, you get the noise of the engine and you think, hmm, I'm quite vulnerable in this water. <laughs> Even though everyone's really careful and super safe, you just realise, yes, I'm just on a couple of inflatable stand-up paddleboards strapped to a DeLorean frame. And we didn't need to slow down, that was for sure. The Ranger didn't think we were speeding, judging by his reaction. <laughs> After about another 25 minutes of pedalling, Thurn Windmill came into view. And thankfully, there was a parking space right in front. And it's safe to say that passing boats were a little bit confused by the fact there was a car on the water. After a quick stop at Thurn Windmill, for some ice cream and drinks, it was time to head back in the DeLorean and pedal back to the marina. The journey back was a bit more arduous and we didn't get to film too much of it because we had to use the electric trolling motor quite a lot more to help us get upstream because the tide was on the way out. So we probably had about a one to two mile an hour tide working against us. So it took about 45 minutes just to get back to the marina. So here we are just entering the marina and you can see that it's a bit of a breeze as well, so that didn't help. Having safely made it back to the marina at one piece, we realised how hot the prop shafts had got, specifically the knuckles that join the gearbox to the prop shaft. These connectors help the gearbox connect to the prop shaft at an angle, and similarly the prop on the end of the prop shaft is at another angle on another one of these connectors. They're getting really hot, so obviously we're wasting lots of energy by pedalling, and that's coming out as heat. So the next modification I need to make is reducing the angle where the prop shaft connects to the gearbox. That needs to be almost straight, so that there's a lot more efficiency going through the pedals into the prop shaft and via the gearbox. It was also pretty obvious that the trolling motor isn't quite up to the job, particularly when you've got a bit of flow coming against you on the river. It gets us going at about maybe two miles an hour, and that's with us pedaling as well. And that's a 62 power thrust trolling motor with a 100 amp hour leisure battery. It just didn't seem like it was holding up very well on the way back, so really this is something I need to change. So join me next time when I'll fit a 48 volt lithium battery pack, solar panels and a 3 kilowatt motor that's designed for e-foils. Hopefully this will get us going at a decent speed, maybe about 3 to 5 miles an hour. Looking at some early testing of the motor, it looks like it's going to be pretty powerful. Got any questions put them in the comments and i'll try my best to answer them 
And if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up, why not? And follow me by subscribing to the channel and you'll get notified next time we do another video, which should be very soon.